Right, good morning, grade 12. Um, today we are going to, to be doing a lesson on inverse functions. So that, that is new heading. Okay, now hopefully on Friday, you guys managed to copy down, down those notes that I asked, asked you to put down. The first one was on domain range, which we are going to talk, talk more about after we've covered inverses. But then the second note was on reflections. Now, the two reflections that you have had to do already, so those are the ones that you did on Friday, were the first one was in the x-axis. And you should remember you've been doing the sixth grade with 10 that when you have, have or when you have given a graph, they can, can ask you to reflect the graph, graph in the x-axis. You need to be able to draw the reflected graph, but also to the equation of the reflected graph. So, so when anything is reflected in the x-axis, then we use the rule. You might remember this from grade, grade nine. X, Y, Y becomes X negative Y, right? And if you, if you can't remember how this works, you can go look at the diagram on Friday's lesson. But basically, if you have a point and it's like up here, you're reflected, your X axis is there, you're reflected in the X axis, it has the same X value, but the Y value changes its sign. So that is then also what, what you do in the equation. So in, in the equation of alignment, this was also Friday's nice note, or, or not align necessarily, but in the equation of whatever function or graph you're working with, you can just change the sign of y and then simplify from there. The second one, one was in the y axis. <clears throat> now, the rule that you used in transformations, in reflections in grade nine, was that xy will become negative xy. So if you have your y-axis, you have a point there, you're reflected in the y-axis. It has the same y value, but the x value goes from being negative to positive, for example, or positive to negative. So x changes sign, the x value changes sign, but y value stays the same. Now the third one you haven't done yet, and this is what we're going to discuss today, Third one is where you are reflecting sums in the line y equal x. Now you did actually do reflection in grand line. The rule was, was x, y will become y, x. So I'll just draw a little diagram here at the bottom. And we just draw a small Cartesian plane. <clears throat> okay, you have your y axis, you have your x axis, you have your origin. Now, the line y equals x, the straight line that makes a 45 degree angle with the x axis. Line y equals x, you had to actually draw this line, it would have a y-intercept of zero, right, right? But remember, y equals mx plus c. Your c, c value is your y-intercept. Since there is no c value, that means that there is actually c value of zero. So your y-intercept is zero. But then if you're looking at this point, this is then actually also the x-intercept. So you would then have to find another point on this line. Something that you could, can do in order to do that is just sub in, in an x value any x value that you can choose or that you want to use. So if you work working with x equals one, one for example, I'll write it here at the bottom. If x is, is equal to one, then y is equal to x. That's the equation of the line, right? y equals x. x. So if x is one, then y is also going to be one. So you have the point one, one, one on this line. Now you can draw that however you want to. Let me just measure a centimeter here. Let's say that that is one, right? So we'll say that that is the point one, one. But then you'll also have the point negative one, negative one. 
any x value that you substitute into this equation, you will get that same y value, right? Because the equation is saying that your y value is equal to your x value, y equals x. Okay, but you only need two points in order to draw a straight line, so we can do, do that. Now, for the purposes of this, I'm going to make it a dotted line because it was a line of friction in this case, okay? So I'm not gonna, gonna do it as a solid line. So that is the line y equals x. Now, now we have a point, let's say the point zero two. We have on this line, and I'm gonna label it zero two. So the x value is zero, the y value is two. If you now take this point and you reflect it over this line, right? that point is going to have to go there. So your new your reflected point is actually going to be over there somewhere, and it will be the point two on, on the x value and zero on, on the y axis. So that is why when we are in the line y equals x, the x and y values is actually just swap around. Now guys, when you're reflecting a function, or any graph, remember a graph is not necessarily a function. When you're reflecting any type of graph in a line y equals x, we call that reflected graph the inverse. So we can add that at the top there of this note. The image when a function or, or yeah it doesn't have to be a function it can just be, just be any graph function some slash off is reflected in the line y equals x <clears throat> Okay, so now we've just had a point where we will draw an example of an actual graph that's like reflecting in this line just now. But first, I want us just to um, make some notes on, on the inverse or an inverse. Now, the important thing, the most important thing that you need to remember, and that's going to make it much e easier for you to actually work with inverses, and then to remember this rule. To remember that when you are reflecting in a line y, y equals x, x, in other words, when you, when you are finding the inverse, all you do every single time is swap x and y. Okay, so I'm going to make a summary now of all of the cases, all of the things that will actually happen. But this is important, guys. When you are finding inverse, you swap x and y. Okay, so I'll write that down. <clears throat> So when finding the in inverse, you are reflecting in the line. <clears throat> Sorry about that y equals x therefore swap x and y for example i'm going to let the different types of questions that they can ask you i suppose the, the different different types of um, things that you will have to work with when you find the inverse if, if f of, of x is equal to 2x plus 4, all right, so that is now the original graph. All right, we're going to be talking about the original, and then we're going to be talking about the inverse. So for the original graph, f of x, remember that this means y equals 2x plus 4, right? We remember that f of x, this is just function notation, f of x means a function of x 
So a Y, the output value that we get when we're subbing an input value and X value. All right, right? So if f of x, x is 2x plus 4, then f to the negative 1, one x. so that, that means the inverse. All right, all right, so we're going to be working with that notation for inverse. When, when you see that notation, you need to know that they are talking about the inverse. All right, the inverse of that. Now, in order to actually find the equation of the inverse, we're just going to do some calculations. Now, like I said here at the top, when finding the inverse, you are reflecting in the line y equals was x. Therefore, so swap f and y. So now, guys, that is what we're going to be doing in the equation. Remember when we worked with these two, two reflections here, here we, we basically apply the rule in, in the equation. So when you're reflected in the x-axis, you change the sign of y in, in the equation. When you're reflected in, in the y-axis, you change the sign of the x in that equation. So now we're, go, we're going to do the same thing here. In, in the our equation, we are going to swap the x and the y around. So the original function was y equals 2x plus 4. The inverse is going to be x equals 2y plus 4. Right? So the x and the y, they literally swap up around in the in the equation but now that we know that that we can't leave an equation like this right right standard form is always with y, y equals everything else so do need to move everything else to the other side i'm just going to put the two y on left and then i'm going to go into my x and, and remove this this plus or over so it's going to come x minus four Right now, you need to divide by two. You can write it like this if you want. It's minus four over two, or so that it looks more like a straight line equation, right? We can say that we're going to divide each term by two. So we're going to do x over two minus four over two, which is two. Or you can also just write that x over two as a half x. <clears throat> so y equals a half x minus two. Now, guys, if we're looking at these two equations, right? We see that, that these two straight line equations. This is a straight line with a gradient of two and a way intersect of four. This is a straight line, line gradient of a half and a way intersect of negative two. All right, so these two graphs are inverses. Now, if you wanted to write it properly, you would say, the inverse of f like that is a half x minus two, or that, or that. You can obviously decide which option you want to choose. Okay, so that is what you do do when you are finding the inverse equation, equation of the inverse. All right, you just have to pause here if you're not and copying down on the I'm going to turn the page. <coughs> Okay, next step. When drawing a graph, <clears throat> and it's inverse. Oh, sorry. Okay, when drawing a graph and it's inverse. So often they'll ask you to, to do that. They'll ask you to draw the original graph and then to, to draw the inverse. Now, I'll, instead of actually, you know, following all the steps that we usually do, do we draw a graph. graph. We usually see, okay, okay, which type of graph is, is it? Then, then we identify, like if, if it's a hyperbola, for example, we find the uh, asymptotes, then we find, find the intercepts, then we find extra point, points of the two, we plot them and draw them. Okay, you would still do that for the, the first graph, all right? So the first step would be find all points of interest. I'm gonna call them that. Of the original graph.
Okay, now, now this could possibly include um, an asymptotes. Now, remember, what did we say? When you are finding the inverse, you just swap X and Y around. Now, guys, that works like we just saw in the equation, but it actually also works with points. And this is something that we're going to use quite, quite often going forward. If, if you have points on your original graph, you do not have to go and calculate points on the inverse. You can just take the point points that you have of the original graph and literally swap X and Y around. Okay, so, so your second step will be to swap the X and Y values of the points of the original graph and this will work for the asymptotes as, as well. So to swap the x and y values of the points of the original graph to get points on the inverse. <clears throat> okay, so for example, I'm actually, I'm not actually going to draw this graph. You guys can do it. You are going to have to do it, but I'm just going to do the calculations. Let me just check. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pause here. This is only part what one because I'm running out of time. By, by the time you have, have watched this video and got into the point, part two, yeah. Okay. Oh, let me just move that down. There you go. Okay, I will, will see part, part two shortly.